Hey, welcome back to this old tool grinding shop or otherwise known as I have no idea what I'm doing. Today I'm trying to regrind a module gear cutter. This is a module 2 20 degree pressure angle back relieved gear cutter or a relief turned is the right term. And I got this very cheap on eBay, but it, somebody highly abused it. It's really, it's utter garbage. But it being a, ba a relief turned cutter, you can regrind these uh, until there is no material left without losing your geometry. So let's see how we, we grind this and then we talk about them, some theory behind it. The idea when you regrind these is you don't m move the cross, cross table to adjust your depth of cut, but you turn the cutter into the wheel. That's the way the, the material is removed or the depth of cut for grinding is set. Otherwise, if you, if you move in even more and more, you not only change the profile, but you also change the cutting angle of the, the cutter. And by turning it into the wheel, like you would regrind a countersink, a standard three flute countersink, that's also just turned into the wheel, um, you keep this profile. And as I have to remove really, really a lot of material, I'm, I have to grind almost one millimeter away, I'm using a, a cutoff wheel actually because these cut very cool and very fast. This is a 3M Cubitron 2 cutoff disc for the handheld angle grinder and I found these to work exceptionally well on, on stationary machines like surface grinder and tool and cutter grinder. Uh, they are cheap, they hold up forever, they, they grind very very cold, you will see that in a second and they're just all around a good wheel or as we say it's precision engineered dirt glued together don't let 3m hear that they will probably yell at me <laughs> but normal grinding wheels are dirt that's glued together and this is precision dirt that has been glued together okay here is a decent close-up view of the teeth here you can see one that i already reground partially uh, and you can see that the profile is fully intact here this one is also ground and here is one that's not ground. As you can see on the left side of the cutter here it is, it is highly damaged. Somebody ran this cutter way too fast or in something hardened and he damaged about one millimeter of the land behind the cutting edge which takes some effort <laughs> to do. And he, he rolled over a burr here into the into this face and this side here is also damaged. So this is really this is really some severe damage to this cutter. And we're going to remove this until we uh, here is the reground tooth. You can see that the, the land behind the or the, the relief surface back here is undamaged. I'm removing so much material that I'm actually slicing off a little bit. Okay, the grinding wheel is spinning this direction and the, the table is moving this direction, so we're actually taking a climb cut. First, the, the sparks are more controllable that way because I can have the dust extraction on this side and also climb grinding doesn't take as much force because the grinding wheel is kind of self-feeding compared to conventional grinding. So, took off a full slice of material here. We will come back with a different wheel and clean this up because the the cutoff wheel does not leave a high precision surface. This is just for material removal. So then we index to the next tooth. I still don't have an index plate set up for this dividing head on this grinder, so I'm using the, the graduated dial on the back. This is not ideal, but that's what I have here.
I cleaned up the gash between the teeth uh, with a smaller inverted cup wheel. This is a cup wheel that's, ha that's holding an arbor with the flat facing to the back side. And now I'm going to adjust the cutter radially, something like half a degree into the wheel and do a final sharpening on these faces. Adjusting radially means I will open the clamp here, I will, I will rotate this half a degree into the grinding wheel, lock it, open this and turn this back to zero so I don't lose my indexing. I could also just with each, each time I go on 30 degrees uh, add half a degree but it's easier if you zero out your dial. So now we should take a very light cut off the face of each teeth, each tooth when we pass by with the grinding wheel. Let's take some blue color so we see what's happening and proceed on. There we go. That looks like a beautiful grind on the face of this tooth. This is a piece of D2 tool steel, uh, 12379 in the ISO world. Uh, not, not the nicest stuff to machine and that makes it quite good for a test cut, <laughs> in my mind. Test cut in something soft is easy, but a test cut in, in a high chrome uh, tool steel, that's something else. I was running at 100 RPM, took a 2.5 millimeter pass through and then took another 0.5 millimeter pass to clean it up, uh, feeding reasonably slow. Here you can see the profile that we cut into the steel. Looks, <laughs> at least by eye, it looks like it should. Looks like a gear teeth, uh, the space between two gear teeth actually. And the finish is not too shabby. I was using cutting oil because we were running very slow and this is a very heavy cut, a form cut. So cutting all is beneficial. Yeah, here, 12379, that's D2. We're over at the bench, let's talk about this cutter. As you can see, I have I've drawn a circle to, to give me the center and I have drawn two lines. One goes through the center of the cutter and then there is a parallel line to it. The second line, this one here, uh, this is the cutting surface of the tooth. And the way this works is the cutting surface is basically parallel to the center line, but it's offset. And that way, when we turn this tooth over to the center line, we get a slight positive cutting action. We get a little bit more than zero degree uh, rake on the cutting edge. And usually that leads to a little bit of, of profile error. But usually on these cutters, that's already taken into account in the profile that's machined onto these cutters. 
And now when you regrind this cutter, let's say you start like this and you will be tempted to come in with a grinding wheel, touch off here, move the grinding wheel over by the amount you want to take off and just grind parallel through. You can do that. That will work. It will cut like the like this. Let's say you have removed this material. Then when we tr look at the cutting condition now, uh, if you do this and you, you look at the vertical center line here, the, the cutting angle gets larger. It's more positive and that leads to a larger profile error. So don't do that. Uh, the gears you're cutting will come out uh, with a wrong profile if you do this. What you actually want to do is, you want to turn the cutter a little bit and grind on, the, on this line here. Just grind through here. When you do, the, do it this way, uh, all the angular uh, conditions on the cutter stay the same. So, uh, you want to advance the cutter into the grinding wheel radially, just as I have shown by moving the dial on the dividing head of the grinder. Turn it in, grind, index, grind, index, always radially. Do not, do not step over the grinding wheel parallel, or you will be you will have, you will be in trouble. So, looking at this cutter, the profile on these is not ground. This shape is not ground. This is actually turned. Uh, it's called relief turning, where the this 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 spins like this on a on a lathe or on a back-reliefing machine, there are special machines for this, and there are back-reliefing attachments. And as you can see, this is not a circle going all around. Each, each uh, tooth falls off to the back constantly. As you can see here, it goes down. Also the OD of the cutter, it's not, it's not a circle, it's, yeah, the, the OD is a circle, but uh, each tooth is constantly going down in a radius. That's what we call a, a relief turned cutter. All these uh, relief turned cutters are ground that way, no matter if it's a gear cutter or a radius cutter or a spline profile cutter. Uh, all of these are ground on the surface here and by advancing radially, not parallel. I could not be bothered to clean up the bottom of the gullet here completely. I just uh, whittled away some of the material. And once again here the test piece. As you can see the surface finish is quite decent, but that's inherent of the material. Uh, the, the better tool steels like A2, D2, O2, all these machine usually quite nice, but are reasonably hard on tools. But looks like looks like we get the correct profile again, and the cutter is cutting, which it was absolutely not able to do before the regrind. So uh, that, that's that's quite nice. That was my five cents on resharpening uh, a relief turned cutter. Hope you enjoyed. Hope I didn't mess up too much. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.